Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God. It's the revelator once again. And hoping the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We are coming from a presentation that was titled The Mood Swings. And I'm praying and hoping that you listen to that same presentation which addressed different altercations of moods that are altered by demons. In that presentation, I explained a personality demon with the different characters that causes you to have a countless number of mood swings. And I explained how those mood swings are inspired by evil spirits. And today, I want to talk about the prison spirit. And inside the prison spirit, I'm going to be focusing on the convict. And I'm also praying that you are going to be given the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding of this sermon presentation, the prison spirit. Now, for us to understand more, let us get into the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 24. And it reads, Therefore, if you have anything against your brother, if you know that you have offended your brother, if you have a grudge against your brother, in Matthew 5 verse 24, leave there your gift on the altar and go your way first and be reconciled and reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly whilst he is on the way lest at any time the adversary delivers you to the judge and the judge delivers you to the officer and you are cast into prison what prison is being referred to here most people think that the prison that is being referred to here is a prison with the iron bars with the steel bars being locked behind cells a prison is a spiritual atmosphere a prison is an environment in the spirit a spirit that puts you inside jail mentally physically spiritually emotionally psychologically Everyone that lives in bitterness, they live in prison. Everyone that lives in anger and revenge, they are imprisoned inside certain emotions. They are imprisoned inside, inside certain attitudes. They are imprisoned certain circumstances that surround them. You can be surrounded by certain circumstances that put you inside a prison. In those circumstances, if you are not delivered from those circumstances, you are automatically a prisoner. You can be a prisoner of sin. You can be a prisoner under countless habits, addictions. You can be a prisoner of depression you can be a prisoner of anxiety you can be a prisoner of loneliness by the time we talk about a prisoner who is inside a building who is locked behind bars it is also a prison spirit but this is the only common prison significance that you are most common with and this scripture that i've read here He's talking about a, a brother that is a matter against a brother. And the, the other brother goes with a gift on the altar. And the scripture is saying, leave the altar on the gift. And first, go and get reconciled with your brother. Lest your matter takes different levels of protocols. And it reaches an extent which forces the judge to be left with no choice but to throw you in prison. 
Meaning that there are circumstances that are put by the devil in your life. And he isolates you. He puts you inside a box. He imprisons you with various sicknesses. He imprisons you with bitterness. He imprisons you with anger. He imprisons you with bad attitudes. And people run away from you. And when people run away from you, you are left deserted. And the desert spirit delivers you to the prison officer. And that prison officer is a demon. And that demon handcuffs you. All this that I'm explaining is happening in the spirit. And once you become a convict, which is the relevance of the presentation, you become a convict while you see others that are in the physical. When they are looking at you, they believe that you are free, but yet you are imprisoned. I'm speaking against the prison spirit today. Now, let us go to the book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 2. Now, when John had yet in prison, while he's in prison, the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. John still has disciples, but he is in prison. How weird. How unusual. That you can still have disciples, but be in prison. You can still lead others and assign others while it's to you that is leading others and assigning others. You are in a prison. John is sending his disciples to go and inquire if the one that had come was really Jesus. But this one that you are inquiring, John, is the one whom you yourself said, the one on whom the devil descend upon, he is the one who is the son of God. But now that you are in a prison, you are sending your disciples to go and inquire if the one that has come is really the one. It's a prison spirit again. The prison spirit will subject you to a certain torture, manipulation and sabotage to the level that it can even squeeze your mind and you start doubting yourself. John is now doubting the same Christ on whom he baptized and he even saw the dove descending upon his shoulders. When the prison spirit holds you, when the prison spirit convicts you, when the prison spirit subjects you under a torture, when the prison spirit squeezes you, when the prison spirit manipulates you, you start looking at everything with an eye that has lost hope. You lose confidence. Why? Because you are now under oppression. You are no longer under freedom. Freedom means confidence. Freedom means being hopeful. Freedom means being optimistic. Freedom means having positive faith. And that was now lost in John the Baptist. And the two disciples go to Jesus as they have been sent by John. And when they get to Jesus, Jesus says unto them, Go and show John. Go and tell John the things that you have seen and heard. And he starts healing the sick. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Why is Jesus not just responding to what John has asked? Why? Because Jesus is already demonstrating those that are in the captivation of various prisons. Those that are lame is a prison. Those that are deaf, they are living in a prison. Those that can't see, they are living in a prison. The prison spirit comes in different categories. And the convicts, they are in different prisons. Even if you go to the prison norm that you are used, you'll see that there will be different prisoners, different inmates who are in different cells, who committed different crimes. 
And same applies with the prison spirit. It applies and it instructs and it assigns different demons that captivate different inmates who are convicted of different demonic possessions of infirmities, different demonic possessions of various sicknesses, different demonic possessions of various sabotages. And all those negativities, they represent different cells of inmates in the spirit. Now, let us go to the book of Acts chapter 12 verse 1. Now, by that time, Herod, the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church and he killed James, the brother of John with the sword. James was also a disciple. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four quaternions of four soldiers to keep him intending after easter to bring him forth to the people now this prison had four quarters it means the four categories it means you to enter into a prison and enter inside another prison and enter into the next prison and enter into the last prison and peter was put in the last prison so in any way that peter would want to escape or anyone that would want to rescue Peter, he would have to go three prison yards and having to unlock the gates or the iron bars, the cells, until he gets to Peter, who was in the fourth basement. I remember explaining about the three chambers of hell, and I touched on this passage. Now, Peter was therefore kept in prison. But Peter is anointed. Peter is an apostle in the New Testament, but still he has been put in prison. The prison spirit is very stubborn. It has arrested a man that is anointed. It has arrested a man that is able to declare in the spirit and Ananias and Sapphira die. It has arrested someone that has prayed for a man at the beautiful gate who was lame and he got up. That's what the prison spirit does. And after Peter has been put in that fourth basement of the prison, the church continued praying without ceasing praying for Peter that he had been locked up in prison. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with the two chains, and the keepers before the door kept in the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in prison. The reason why God sent an angel all the way from heaven was because he knew that for Peter to be delivered out of prison, he had to be delivered by an angel, a spirit. Why? Because Peter had been bound by the prison spirit. What you assume is that the Lord could have sent other men that are mighty or an army to fight for Peter, but this is a spirit. It needs a spirit to deliver Peter who is anointed in spirit out of the prison spirit and the angel of the lord came and behold peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with the two chains and the angel of the lord came upon him and the light shined in prison and he smote peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quick and the chains fell off from his hands. How did the chains fail, fall? Which fell? How did those chains fall off from Peter without a key? 
if what locked is not a spirit if you believe that it was a key that locked those chains then it needed a key to unlock so tell me how did the chains get unlocked by just the presence of an angel if it is not also a spirit that had locked peter i'm talking about the prison spirit before one gets arrested there is a prison spirit that should have been addressed before one gets imprisoned or jailed in whatsoever captivity under the categories that i have explained one needs to be addressed against the prison spirit before you stand at, 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 at before a trial before the judge pronounces a sentencing there has to be ways that are spoken there has to be ways that are spoken and those words they should pronounce victory those words should pronounce freedom against the spirit of captivation against the prison spirit and the chains fall off from peter's hands and legs and the angel said unto him get up get yourself up and bind on your singles and so he did and he said unto him cast your garment about and follow me and went out and followed him and the angel of the lord walked with peter and as peter saw this he thought it was a vision why because peter does not understand how can i be taken out of prison by anyone in such a way in such a prison that has got many gates gates that are representing a conviction gates that are representing sabotage gates that are representing captivity one of you as i'm preaching right now you are being followed by a prison spirit but this prison spirit it needs to be addressed by an angel of the lord it needs to be addressed by the spirit of the lord so that the invisible chains that are in your hands they get untied they get unchained the prison spirit once it has followed you you become an inmate inside your mind you have no rest you are always in one place you are caged you can't move you are not flexible even anyone that wants to help you right now they can't help you why because you have been chained even mentally once you try to get a job something gets interrupted someone gets interrupted the one that wanted to help you once you want to get married something happens there is a breakup everything just gets messed up every time a door is about to get opened why because you are locked inside a prison system and there's a prison spirit that is fighting you Peter is escorted out of the four yards of the prison. All these four quarters, they are quarters where the angel was walking through the gates and the gates were opening. And as Peter is taken out, the angel of the Lord leads him out of the prison. And then the angel of the Lord departs. Now, and as Peter had been taken out, Peter went back to the people that were praying the same people that were praying for peter and when peter came to the house where many were gathered together praying peter knocked at the door of the gate and the damsel came and her name was rhoda and when she knew peter's voice she opened not the gate for the, for greatness but ran in and told how peter stood at the gate and they said unto her, are you mad? But she constantly affirmed that it was Peter. Then they said, it is his angel. None of the people that were praying wanted to believe that it was Peter. Why? Because the prison spirit does not allow you to see your breakthrough while you are praying. You continue praying for what God has already given you. You are praying for a husband that is right, right in front of you. You are praying for salvation that you have already been given. You are praying for a business, but you can't see the opportunity of business that you have been given. Everything that you are praying for, it has already been given unto you, but you cannot see it because there is a prison spirit. 
Peter is now free, but the church is no longer free. It is still praying for Peter that has been made free. Today, I'm here to address the prison spirit. I'm addressing the prison spirit that is against the revelator in the ministry. The prison spirit that is against mysteries and revelations. The prison spirit that is against any disciple mysteries and revelations. I'm against the prison spirit today that is against my own family, my bloodline family. I'm against the prison spirit that is against my marriage. The prison spirit that is against my children. The prison spirit that is against the disciples of this ministry. The prison spirit that is against all those that are yet to be saved under mysteries and revelations. And the prison spirit that is against any listener that is listening to this sermon i'm praying for you against the prison spirit in the name of jesus